Hello, welcome to Sean Bull. So today on the show, I have Bob Hassan, who's with me talking about banking shutdowns, financial crisis, but also hope-filled perspective. If you don't know Bob, he hosts a show called Explain the Marketplace with me every week. We'll talk about that as well. We also have an unlikely Christian Oscar win by a best known animator that I love. You guys are going to love this guy. He's a Christian. You're going to love this. We have the Promise Keeper CEO, Ken Harrison, making a special announcement right here on the show. He's breaking it here. You're going to hear it here first. I love that. And a pastor in England is being treated like a terrorist because of his stance on the LGBTQ plus world. And I want to start out with that story right away. This is crazy. You know, freedom of speech and religious intolerance is at an all time high right now. Freedom of speech and tolerance, freedom and religious intolerance, where you can't really share the perspective that you have if it doesn't fit a narrative. And some nations are even penalizing people for having a different perspective. That's the case of Reverend Dr. Bernard Randall, an ordained Church of England chaplain who uh, was fired for giving a moderate sermon on identity politics. And it's a clear example of the growing threat to Christian freedoms. Randall's appeal against an unemployment tribunal uh, ruling is highlights the importance of protecting the free exchange of ideas, especially in schools, and preventing the position of a controversial ideology. Randall's sermon reflected mainstream Christian beliefs about marriage, which are based on God's love for all people and the desire for full human flourishing. These beliefs are held by a substantial minority in society and deserve to be taken seriously. On the other hand, the beliefs of gender identity ideology are held by a minority and are controversial. It is not right for a school to teach them as if it were indisputable facts and to shut down those who wish to take an open approach that's thoughtful for the well-being of young people for everything else, which is nuclear family, marriage being between men and women. The ruling against Randall is a blow for free speech and Christian freedoms. It makes the freedom of exchanging ideas in schools and in wider society much, much harder. And it feels today as if Christians are one minority who are not afforded the protection of the Equality Act, and that's wrong on every level. It's a foundational principle of true democratic society that the free exchange of ideas is good for everyone. Randall's case also highlights the danger of extreme LGBTQ groups like Educate and Celebrate who want to confuse and influence young children with extreme ideology and smash heteronormative normativeness. So <laughs> heteronormativity, I don't know how to say that word. These groups should never be allowed into UK schools as they're putting thousands of children at risk for long-term damage if their influence continues. The Church of England's own Valuing All God's Children guidance for schools was used against Randall at the tribunal, which is so concerning right now for the UK. The message from the judgment to Christians is that they cannot disagree or express disagreement. And if they do, they're going to have to comply, celebrate, and promote LGBTQ stuff or be fired. It is not enough to be tolerant and liberal in the original sense of those words. Christians have to actively promote and celebrate LGBTQ ideology, marriages, these kinds of things. If you didn't see the book itself, it was a book um, that was about my shadow's pink. And this is what he was preaching against. It was a little boy who's going through as, as a little child of maybe eight years old, going through discovering his homosexuality. And, and it's being read in the school as curriculum, not just as a thing in the library, but as curriculum in the school. So in conclusion, Randall's case is a tragic example of censorship of biblical teaching and the danger of prevailing secular orthodoxy on human sexuality. It's so crucial to protect free exchange of ideas and prevent the imposition of controversial ideology, especially in schools right now. Christians must stand firm and we have to, you guys, we have to fight for justice. We have to ensure the rights and freedoms are protected. And it's so wild that we're the ones fighting as Christians, as conservatives for protection for freedom of speech. You wouldn't think that we would be doing that mission because so many times the progressive left has said, we need these freedoms, but they're not saying it anymore. They're saying we need this narrative. And if you fight against it, they're doing it like a religious battle, like a, a crusade for different communities and ideas that we need to come against right now and say there's room for other arguments that have been around since the beginning of time, including nuclear marriage. Well, I also have a story today that I think you're going to love, and this is about the Oscars. This is so cool. Former atheist artist turned unlikely evangelist, and he wins an Oscar. He never thought he would even be up for an Oscar, Charlie Maxey. And if you don't know Charlie Maxey, he started to come out with these just beautiful drawings, just these hand drawings, and he ended up turning them into stories, and they were just short-form stories. Like, here's one. I, you probably can't see this very well, and if you're listening on audio, I apologize, but um, you can look it up online. This is too blurry. But that's just a beautiful drawing. And it says, sometimes I feel lost, said the boy. Me too, said the mole. But we love you and love brings you home. 
Now these are the, it's just so touching. Like each page is filled with touching stories. And then they turn this book into an animated project, which I think we buy this book for a lot of our friends. Well, the triumph of faith in art, Charlie Maxey's Oscar win for the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. It's so profound. He's an outspoken Christian artist for someone who's a hopeless introvert. Even at the award show at the Oscars a couple of weeks ago, he was hiding in the bathroom because he was so nervous about the whole thing, even being there. And he's known in his church community, he's known to his friends as being a hopeless introvert. And he shares that very publicly. But him and his partner, Matthew Freud, have won the Oscar for Best Animated Short uh, at the 95th Annual uh, Academy Awards for inspiring adaptation of Maxie's acclaimed children's book. And during his heartfelt acceptance speech, which I'm gonna show in just a minute, I want you to see how how just in awe he is of the overwhelming support that he had from both you know his audience and also from his book. So let's watch that really fast. The animation team behind The Boy, The Mole, The Fox. So we're having a technical and the horse voice. Worked good. remotely throughout COVID to create a look that closely resembled the ink and watercolor illustrations from the book on which it was based. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be brief. It's a recurring theme. The apology. Um, I just I was in my village very recently, and a lady came up to me and said, um, "I hear you're going to that Oscar thing." And I said, "Yeah." And uh, I said, "I think I'll need help um, with my clothes." And she said, "You will." Uh, and, uh, and, and it's a recurring theme with clothing and myself. And she then said, there's a long pause, and she said, you know, Charlie, I think it takes a lot of courage to make a film. And I think when you go there, there'll be a lot of very, very brave people in the same room. And uh, I looked at her and said, yeah, I think you're right. And it's really true. Uh, and uh, the, the people that I've worked with, they've tolerated me for two years, and they're brave and kind and thank you so much and thank you to my mum and my family and my dog who I've left behind who's who's in a, actually in a hotel I hate to say that I can't so um that wasn't really you meant to say that I'm sorry anyway thank you so so much for this and um, thank you you can just tell how he's a humble soul and just he talks and inspires children from his own childlikeness of needing courage, needing bravery. Well, Maxie's spiritual journey has been a remarkable transformation. Once a fierce critic of Christianity, he eventually found faith on, and a purpose in the church. He was an atheist, you guys, and found Jesus. In 2019, in collaboration with the Christian initiative Alpha UK, he shared the story of his ideological metamorphosis and the value of taking a closer look at Christianity. Now he's a devoted believer, and Mac, Maxie uh, use, utilizes our... I can't talk. Maxie utilizes his artistic messages of faith, hope, and love. His work, such as bronze sculpture, The Return of the Prodigal Son, displayed at his home church, Holy Trinity Brompton in London, which I've seen, is a testament to the deep impact of his faith and his arc. Following his Oscar when Maxie shared a touching story of a woman who was moved to tears by the empowering messages of his book, as conveyed by her younger grandson, and the artist has received numerous testimonies from people whose lives were touched by his work, including my own. And I think that this is the gold that he's searching for. He's not a man who's motivated by money or influence or fame, but people's changed lives. And he's seeing it right now. Well, the film, if you haven't seen it yet, it's on Apple Plus. It's featuring voice work by Tom Hollander, Idris Elba, Gabriel Byrne, and Jude Coward, Nicole. The Boy, the Mole, and the Fox, and the Horse was produced by Apple, the BBC, and The Bad Robot. The exchange, enchanting film is now available on streaming. I want to encourage you guys to watch it. It's all about the power of love, friendship, and faith which is just beautiful. And I'm so glad he won. As a Christian, he uses his voice in such a profound way. And so I celebrate that win at the Oscars. Well, we also have a great story about Demi Lovato. Uh, not about her, actually, it's about her ex. He got saved and baptized while working on a movie. He finds Faith is baptized while filming a scene for the now new movie, Southern Gospel. And this is just incredible. TV star Max in uh, Eric. <laughs> Also, I realize I've never said his name out loud. Finds faith while filming Southern Gospel. In a heartening testimony of faith TV star Max Eric found solace and spiritual connection while filming South Base or Faith Based movie Southern Gospel. The film, inspired by true events, follows the life of 1960s rock and roll singer Samuel Allen, played by him, as he overcomes a tumultuous past to embrace faith in Jesus and eventually becomes a preacher. 
Uh, you know, this actor, he's known for his role in The Young and the Restless and his engagement, this is where he's really known, for his engagement to singer Demi Lovato, but he shares how the experience of portraying Samuel Allen was pivotal in his own spiritual journey. And as he prepared for the role, he immersed himself in scripture and re-examined his own perspective on God, resulting in the significant deepening of his faith. I want to play a clip where he shares about this. Gospel definitely, I have to say, has definitely left the, the strongest impact on me because, um, I mean, even in the film on, on one of the days, like I, I did get baptized. And so the, the experience in and of itself was was really profound for me and brought me so much closer to God. And um, so I'd say Southern Gospel has been the most significant impact. I, know I think it was a little glitchy. I, I think we ended there, but he said it was the most significant impact of his career. And during the filming, he found the strength to navigate the challenges of his personal life, including the public scrutiny surrounding his relationship with Lovato, which was very intense. There's a lot of paparazzi and a lot of false reporting and a powerful display of faith. When he decided to get baptized, he did it uh, while filming his character's baptism scene, which I think is so profound. Has that ever happened in history where someone gets baptized on film, but then does it in reality as the actor as well? And he acknowledged his need for God's protection during this period of his life. And one of the reasons he took this meaningful step was to really stand with Jesus because Jesus stood with him. His story is a testament to the transformative power of how faith works and how demonstrating the love of God can be there even in the most challenging circumstances to bring people closer to him. And Southern Gospel serves as a reminder of the redemptive power of God's love and the potential for change and growth in the lives of those who embrace faith in Jesus. I'll probably be interviewing someone from the Southern Gospel movie soon, but I just wanted to bring you guys a story because I thought it was such a beautiful picture of what God's doing right now. Well, I do want to tell you, we have a prophetic word coming up next. We also have Bob Hassan and Ken Harrison separately in interviews. But I want to tell you real fast, we are so excited that you're enjoying the show as much as you are. I want to encourage you to share it if you're on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, like it, subscribe, come be on the journey with us. We love creating this show for you. If you're on Rumble, we want to welcome you guys here. We've got a little mission for you. Are you ready for some fun? First, make sure to hit subscribe on YouTube. Make sure to hit like on Sean Bowles on Facebook or on Instagram and hit the buzzer like it's a it's your favorite game show like hit that thing smash that thing go ahead click it right now because by doing so you're joining an incredible community which is our crew the people who are commenting right now all over the place we love to interact with you we love the engagement that we're getting about the prophetic words about news stories some of the news stories have come from your comments which is so awesome as we research and we're like oh my gosh they know what's going on so next i'm going to encourage you to stay in the loop especially on youtube where most of our content premieres first so hit the notification bell and make sure you're turning it on because you'll never miss out on a fun and inspired lineup that we have for you. And there's a membership option that you may not know on YouTube that if you don't want to donate directly to Bulls Ministries, but you want to follow us on YouTube, we have a membership option. And we have some special shout outs this week to three new members. We have Karina Muir, Lynn Cunningham, and Blair Irwin. So thank you people for becoming members, part of the Bulls squad. We love you guys. We're so glad you're here. And lastly, let's get social like a treasure hunt. Follow us on social media platforms to discover all of our hidden gems, behind the scenes moments, and exclusive content. And we have quite a bit now. Subscribe, hit notifications, and follow us for an epic adventure. Uh, you know, we have an event also. I'm going to play the promo at the very end of our show today. But we have an event about fasting. And if you've never fasted, I'm going to encourage you. Fasting helps you to experience the power of revival and breakthrough. Are you ready to witness miracles in your life? That's my question to you. It's time to unlock the power of fasting. This event is this week, you guys, with Tammy Haunt Spitter. Join myself and her on March 22nd at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for an eye-opening event and discover how fasting can strengthen your faith, empower you in your prayers, unlock miraculous breakthroughs. That's what Tammy talks about. She sees so many miracles as she teaches on fasting. She's written a book about it, and she's a pastor down in Orange County with her husband, Bill, and they're just dear friends. You're going to absolutely be impacted by what she shares. This isn't just for biblical heroes or special people. You can experience the supernatural in your everyday life for real and embrace the challenge to prepare for a deeper encounter with the Holy Spirit. God's still in the business of miracles and fasting can be your key to unlocking him. So don't miss out. It's only $15 to buy a ticket today, or you can go on in our spiritual academy for $25 a month, which includes this event access to all past, current, and future classes and events. So I'm encouraging you to secure your spot right now. You're going to so enjoy it. Well, my main story today, I'm going to 
I'm going to just commend my friend who's coming on, Bob Hassan, who's a businessman, but also has become somewhat of a spiritual consultant to ministries and organizations and businesses around the world. And Bob came on many years ago with Sheree and I and helped us to restructure what we were doing and has helped us ever since in every iteration of what we're doing. And I've so been encouraged by him, but we started a podcast together called Exploring the Marketplace to explore what God's doing and people's very real lives in the marketplace. So we interview people who've never heard it. I'm going to encourage you to watch it sometime or listen to it sometime. We're on CBN News, but we're also a podcast exploring the marketplace. And Bob is absolutely brilliant. But because of the financial crisis that's happening right now with the banks who've collapsed, several banks now in several countries have collapsed. And because of some of that instability we have and there's a fallout, we wanted to bring Bob on to talk about this financial crisis. Bob, we're so glad you're here. Well, Sean, thanks for having me. Well, this is exciting because you always bring hope. And so you're a risk manager. And so you know how to look at the bad, you know how to look at the negative, but something inside of you, I love how you process, because by the time it gets through your spirit and your mind, you have a different, I don't know, output that comes in a lot of other people who speak about these kinds of things. So kind of describe to us the situation we're in right now, and then what you think is happening. Well, it's interesting. We're we're having, I'm, I'm not going to say a banking crisis, but there's some issues with mid-sized banks. And uh, late uh, last week, a, a week and a half ago, um, SVB, which is a bank in uh, Northern California, got taken over by the FDIC. And uh, before they were taken over by the FDIC, there was a sort of a there was a bank run from depositors taking their funds uh, out of the bank because of some bad news that had happened. The good news is is that uh, once the FDIC took over the bank they guaranteed all the deposits uh, over the FDIC insurance level of $250,000. So one thing that we have to talk about today, Sean, is um, depositors or people who have accounts in banks who have, who have under $250,000, those funds are safe. because Which is of, the majority of Americans. Yes, those funds are safe because of FDIC insurance. Yeah. So in the case of SVB, the FDIC came in, they closed the bank, they reopened it the next day, and, and it, all the SVP employees were now employees of the federal of the FDIC. Wow. So um, the government did the right thing by making sure that uh, all depositors were safe. There's going to be a lot that's going to play out with the shareholders and with the ownership of the bank, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what does it look like to feel safe in, in the banking sector right now? Yeah, it's really interesting because when I look at it, you know, there's any financial kind of magazine or online blog or, you know, space on YouTube, you hear just the, the doom and gloom. You hear what might happen, the domino effect that the government's trying to prevent right now. And that they've done a good job so far at preventing because they had set up since 2008, they set up this insurance and they set up that banks pay into this. It's not our taxpayer dollars, thank God, at this point. But then you hear from other people who are saying it will be tax dollar money. And there's there's such an instability that you better watch your money tomorrow because it might be gone. What do you say when people, when I would say the majority, I would say the 80% of what you're hearing is, is fear tactics or fear-based. What do you say to that? Well, I think being prudent and, and sober of mind and spirit is, is really important. Um, the safest thing that you can do is bank with one of the big banks. Uh, and I'm talking about JP Morgan, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo. Those are big banks. There's, there's kind of a tagline that uh, you hear in the financial world where it's too big to fail. Yeah. And, um, and so if you're really nervous uh, about, about the banking system, if you're with a small or mid-sized bank and, and you feel like you want to do something about it, then um, open an account at one of those bigger banks and, and, and put your money there. That's the safest thing you can do. Well, in, in the midst of the safest thing that you can do, um, it's interesting because I, I think like you've taught me through the years of having those personal relationships with mid-sized banks and having a long-term commitment to them as well. And so there's, to me, I would also say maybe keep a, a level of your account open at mm -hmm. these mid-sized banks and also be there for support. Like we have a friend who was on Victor the Banker on one of the banks mm -hmm. on our Explore the Marketplace and, and he's a friend of ours now. And like we actually bank with him and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have a personal mortgage through him and the whole thing. 
And so I think like even just standing in support for some of the banks, even if you have to secure your finances, do things out of relationship and out of connection, not just out of self-preservation yeah. and self-protection. Cause that's where we get into, we're no longer America, the land of the free and the, you know, uh, and the land of hope we become fear-based and we just become so capitalist that it's actually stinky capitalism. Yeah. Now, for example, I have stayed with my mid-sized bank and, uh, and the reason I've done that is out of relationship, like you just said. Yeah. Uh, but my eyes are open and I'm watching the news. This weekend, um, Credit Suisse, uh, who was in trouble last week, was uh, bought by UBS in a European bank merger. Credit Suisse had some, some liquidity problems and UBS bought them for, I think, $3 billion. And and one of the things that that, that is happening is as... As normal people, we, we don't have the ability to understand what's happening behind these industries uh, with, with short sellers uh, mm -hmm. shorting the stock that are causing the bank stock prices to, to drop. And as consumers, we just need to be as um, trusting as we can with the institutions, but more, but more with God. I, I mean, I stand... If it was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 through, you know, everything in my life, which is trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. And I think as you listen to commentators and as you're listening to the Sean Bowles show and, and you hear that, you know, the, the, the government is shoring up the banking sector as best they can, but there are options for you. You don't have to let things happen to you. Yeah, that reaction versus proactive energy is what we yeah. talk a lot about that on the Explore the Marketplace show, which I think is just really important. Talk real fast about inflation. We're in an all time uh, or, or modern high of inflation, but we also have interest rates are might peak around the corner and even get raised again. There's people who are wanting to buy cars and houses and they're afraid. They don't know if they should be in a saving total mode. I mean, if you were going to Dave Ramsey us, what would you say? <laughs> well, um, if you're buying a house and let's say you could afford a million dollars at 3% interest, which it was, that's what it was uh, maybe five months ago. Now interest rates are in the sixes, maybe sevens. You, you can't get the same value for, for the million dollars because of interest rates. And so I think you have to be mindful of what the interest rates are and, um, and be, again, I'm, I keep using this word prudent around this time look at your budget again, rerun the numbers, do the math and see what, what, what you can afford and don't make uh, impulsive buys. Mm -hmm. If, if you need to buy a new car, you need to buy a new car. There's certain times when people have to move and no matter when, what interest rates are or what the economic conditions are, they have to move. So if you own a house and you have to sell it in order to move to another area, that's part of what reality is. But, uh, if it's a if it's a a choice, like you you think you want to sell your house, maybe maybe holding on to the lower interest rate loan that you have right now is is smarter until we get through these choppy waters of whatever the recession whatever the recession or the inflationary times are saying. We have confusing numbers. We have high interest rates, but we have low job numbers, uh, uh, low unemployment numbers. So I. It's a it's a time right now where it's kind of hard to discern what's happening and where the economy is going. Yeah, I've heard several Wall Street experts and they've said, you know, that the math is hard on this one because we've never been at a time where there's so much contradiction in the job market versus inflation versus consumer spending. All these types of things are playing against each other. And I know for a lot of people, if you're here in L.A., you know, like we had. We were hit in January with a 780% increase on gas utilities, or we were hit with this year with a 30% increase in homeowners insurance, especially in the areas that are at risk, which is the majority of the state because of the great drought we've been in. All of the droughts mostly healed, thank God. You know, we were hit with all these different extra expenses and fees. And so I think when you say the word prudent, I really appreciate that because this is a season when there's instability in the nations. You don't feed it with your own fear, but you look at it and go, is there an opportunity for me to grow financially? And if there's not, how do I tuck and duck from this earthquake? How do I, how do I just live within my means? How do I live responsibly? I know one of our friends, her and her husband were talking about how they were listening to, I think it was Susie Orman podcast or something. And they realized we have 30 Amazon packages coming a month to our house for different things. We need to like really look at our spending, just our normal spending. We're part of that 
inflation because we're spending so much money and we need to be in a season of saving versus spending, which I think all Christians should be in the majority of the time. But, you know, it's, it's hard for us to think that way. So do you have any just kind of final thoughts as far as wrapping it up? When, when we're a Christian, we're walking with God and we're in a financial market like we're at right now. How do we, how do we discern? How do we look at God? How do we, and I know some of that, what we answer a lot on our show is we listen to God. We try right. to listen to his voice, but give us some final thoughts. Right. Well, we, you are wired to hear, uh, to, to listen to God. And, and, and I think in these times when it's confusing, ch- check who you're listening to, like on social media or on the news. And if, if you're listening to uh, voices that give you fear, maybe don't listen to those voices anymore. And, and I think we, what I've noticed, I've lived through four recessions and what I've noticed is it's always uh, uh, the media and consumer sediment and fear that drives that drives an economic downturn. And I think if we can be if if we can look at actually what's happening and like you said, Sean, s- start to save, look at things like Amazon or Starbucks is always a funny one. Coffee yeah. um, and 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 begin to just save cash, conserve cash as much as you can. And if you're nervous about where the banks are right now, move to a bigger institution. Um, I have not done that because I, I, I believe in the bank that I'm there. And I also think that if, if that bank fails, that um, we'll still be safe. And I think being proactive rather than reactive to fear is something not only financially that we should be a part of, but in all of our lives, taking yeah. everything to God first. And I, I think you and I talk about that in exploring the marketplace. And I do not think that this crisis, uh, uh, this banking issue right now is like the crisis in, that we lived through in 2007 and eight. Uh, I, I think it's more localized than generalized. So I think mm-hmm. we're going to see, some banks fail, but I think the banking industry as a whole will will survive and thrive. Well, I, I'm encouraged by your your forecast, your outlook. I think it's so good. And Bob, people can join us together on Exploring the Marketplaces every Wednesday. I love doing the show with you, and I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much, Sean. I will see you next time. Okay. Well, thank you, Bob. We have a huge shout out from Birch Gold for their support in making this podcast possible. They're our brand new sponsor. And if you're looking to protect your IRA or 401k, Birch Gold has you covered with their free guide. Inside, you'll discover how physical gold and silver can shield you from stock crashes, keep your savings safe from inflation, and add some much-needed diversity to your financial plan. To get your hands on the invaluable guide, simply head over to uh, https forward slash forward slash birchgold.com forward slash Sean Bowles. Make sure to put my name in there and start securing your financial future today. You're going to love this. We have a, I think we have a lower third on that, Glenn, as well, for people who are viewing on the birch gold. So you can put that there as well. Well, I have a prophetic word for you guys, and it kind of involves some of the financial stuff that's happening right now, because I had a dream in 2023. And in the dream, there were two storms coming that would hit the world. And I knew one would be over financial markets and the other was war activities, but not a full scale war. I also saw the storm would really hit hard, but then it would, there would be a calm, there would be a false sense of security. It would be like the eye of the storm. If you think about like when a hurricane blows through, Someone's in the middle of the hurricane. There's a false sense of comfort, like, oh, it's over. And then the rest of the hurricane hits. And we see that now. Think about two or 300 years ago when they didn't know if they were in a hurricane or if they like the average person or if they were actually just in a storm. And so sometimes there was that false sense of security where they go back to business and then the rest of the storm would hit. I feel like we're going to be in that this year at some point. And I feel like there's another wave of storms that's going to hit after the wave we're currently in right now. In the Gospels, the disciples themselves faced two storms too. And I believe we can learn how to handle these storms that we're going to experience with warlike activities. We see Russia and China, you know, uh, meeting this week. And we see Putin, you know, shooting down one of our um, uh, planes over the ocean. We see some of these warlike activities that are happening right now. The rumors of war are strong. There's also war activities happening in over 57 countries right now. Some are in full-scale war. Some are in partial war. But as far as a world war or between major powers, I feel like there's warlike activities that are going to increase for a while. I don't believe God's heart is that we would go into war. And I think there's some solutions that we're going to watch him do just in the nick of time for our nation and for our nations. But I know in these uncertain turbulent times, it feels easy to be lost in and feel alone and feel that sense of 
what's happening in the midst of the storm. But Jesus is always walking with us and he walks with us through all the storms of life, even our international storms, even when the global storms are happening. And just like the disciples who found themselves, they were really in the midst of that great storm. We find ourselves in difficult circumstances that seem beyond our control. But in the midst of a storm, we can take some comfort knowing that Jesus is walking through the storm. And if we call out to him, we're going to find ourselves walking with him in a way that's supernatural. And Isaiah 43, verse 2, the Lord promises, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. This powerful promise to me gives me hope and assurance that we can trust in God and have faith that he's going to guide us. That's the key is that God wants to guide us. If we're listening and praying and surrendering our lives and our will to him, he's going to protect us through even wars and nations or through financial wars right now. Matthew 14, 22 through 33, we read about the disciples who were caught in a fierce storm. And Jesus came to him when he was walking on water, like I said before, and he reassured him saying, take heart. It's I, don't be afraid. Sometimes he comes in ways that we don't even understand when we're in a storm. And Peter moved by faith, stepped out of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Now I think of this, how I know Jesus immediately caught him and says, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And I think of it more of a, like a laughter. I don't think of it like, you have little faith, but it's like that he's not stern. He's saying, look, you felt a wind and it caused you to doubt and you start to sink. And I think if we get focused on the winds or the storm, not on Jesus, we might feel a sinking or a sense of life loneliness or a sense of disconnect. But when we look back at his eyes, when we look with faith, he starts to answer us and we can see him even when we can't see him, meaning we can see the invisible God in our life. And I think that's so important. Well, I have more to this prophetic word and I'll release it later on this week on YouTube. So make sure to look for that. I'm going to share this again and then I'll share an extended version of just some ways that God's going to be coming through this year that you can look for them on. But I do want to say that we have a prophetic breakthrough bundle and I don't want you to miss out on this bundle right now. It's available for just $30 and includes exploring the prophetic, a 90-day devotional, breakthrough prophecies and prayers and declarations, and also provision prophecies, prayers and declarations. And if you've been seeking to deeper your understanding of the prophetic and bring powerful breakthrough prayers in your life, now is the time to act. You can go to our website, bullsministries.com. And this is a limited time bundle only for this month. And it helps to support our ministry and this show and other shows to be made as well. So I would encourage you to get it today. Well, I got to meet up with Ken Harrison as well. And I have a special interview today from my time with Ken. And he's going to make an announcement. If you don't know Ken Harrison, he's the CEO of Promise Keepers. And Promise Keepers is kind of going to a whole nother level. I call it Promise Keepers 2.0. If you weren't impacted by Promise Keepers back in the 80s and 90s, when they took stadiums by storm and celebrities and major pastors from all around the world, but especially in America, and people who were especially in sports, they met together in stadiums and men from around specifically America rededicated or surrendered their lives to Jesus. And it made such a big impact. It moved the needle. Well, they're back at it again under Ken Harrison's direction. And uh, Coach McCartney has handed this off to Ken Harrison. And Ken is sharing about the app that they've started with over 50,000 active users on it right now for men. Men are the loneliest people in the world, especially middle-aged men. And this app and then also these events are going to be so profound for men of all ages to come. So I'm going to play this clip and then I'm going to share with you at the end of the show something that's here for you. Well, I have Ken Harrison here today and we get to talk more to Ken, who's the director of Promise Keepers and the CEO of Promise Keepers. And Ken, I was impacted by Promise Keepers when I was young and you guys have rebooted in some ways Promise Keepers into kind of a 2.0. And a lot of that has to do with an app that you've just launched just recently, but also some of the activities you're doing. Tell us about like why Promise Keepers, why did you say yes to lead this when they transferred the baton to you? Um, boy, oh, but I basically had retired after the LAPD and I got into business and I did really well and I retired and I was going to buy a ranch in Colorado and stay on my ranch and never talk to anybody again. Like, you know, <laughs> this, dream, this, dream. this is like 2012. I was the yeah. old age of 45 and I was praying and I, I really seeking the Lord. You know, you know, when you have those mountaintop moments where sometimes you're praying and it's so real, but God is so close. And it was one of those Absolutely. moments. And all of a sudden God spoke to me in a way he's never spoken to me before. He said, Ken, I did not teach you all I did and put you through all I did so you could ski and hike for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I always show I say the story. And I said, Lord, I'm a Baptist. You're not supposed to talk to me. The, the Pentecost. <laughs> 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 we don't believe you talk to us, God. So uh, and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I was, you know, shocked. 
And he said, are you willing to be as ambitious for my kingdom as you were for your kingdom? Wow. And then I got this strong warning. It was not a voice. It was a, in, in my being that said, be careful of your answer. It's going to cost you your life. And mm -hmm. I started whining at God saying, I, I just, I'm tired of, I'd run a company with 23,000 employees. You know, I'm tired and I'm tired of people. I'm tired of all the stuff and the conflict. I just feel like I've taken, I've earned the right to take it easy for a while, is what I said to God, which is really to the savior who was tortured to death for our sins, probably not a good answer, but it was an honest answer. <laughs> yes. And uh, and he said, that's okay, but you'll miss my full blessing. And I had this vision of sitting at the judgment seat of Christ, where he showed me a life from that 45 years old on of having a nice little life. And then he would show me what I would have accomplished had I given all, and I had weeping and gnashing mm -hmm. of teeth, and wasted life. I still wrestled for two more hours because I thought giving, giving up my life, you know, I was, moderately wealthy. Uh, and I thought he was calling me to live in a hut in Uganda, you know, yeah, um, which is what we always go to. And yeah. finally, I said, Lord, you know, you knew the answer. You know, I'll give it all, whatever you need from me. I want the best you have. And he said, I'll tell you what I have for you when you're ready. And he left. So okay. bottom line was, you're not even good enough to, fig to, to give my call. You have a lot of growing up to do, son. But I do have a plan for you to accomplish when you will. When Promise Keepers came into my life five years later, God made me wait for four years in silence wow. after that. Grow, learn patience, learn humility. And then after after uh, f four years till Waterstone, five years till Promise Keepers, when Promise Keepers came up, I didn't see it. I actually took it into the foundation I ran to close it. And that's when mm -hmm. God came back to me and said, remember that conversation we had in the closet? This was it. And I remember all of a sudden, all these people started calling me. All these famous pastors that I had heard and known when we said we were relaunching Promise Keepers, and so glad you're bringing it back. And it was, all of a sudden, I realized what I had just taken on. Like, it hadn't really occurred to me. Like, this is a huge, huge brand and trusted name in Christendom across the world. Who am I? <laughs> you know, then Satan starts to get to you. And I remember it was the next time that God spoke to me so clearly. He said, I've been preparing you for this your whole life. That was it. Wow. It's been a, dude, I mean, we had Dallas Cowboy Stadium reserved for July of 2020. How's that for timing? It's exactly. been some, some ups and downs, but um, we are back. We've realized to circle back to the app just because God wants to bring back promise keepers doesn't mean he wants to bring it back like it was in the 90s when we were selling at NFL stadiums, because you, you tend to think, oh, we're going to do it like we did before. And, and it's been a hard lesson of, of teaching me. No, what we're going to do is get men onto this app, because what men need is relationship and discipleship. Men are dying because they have no friends and they're dying because literally, the older men literally are teaching. Them. Yeah, there will be 127 suicides today in America like there mm -hmm. were yesterday and tomorrow. 80 percent of those 80 percent will be middle aged men. Because they have no identity, wow. no friends, they have no accountability, they don't know what they're living for. So we realized Promise Keepers this time is not to fill up stadiums and give men a big rah-rah moment. It is to get men into a long-term discipleship relationship with other men. That's that's what we're about. Something happens when there's a brotherhood of men who will fight together. Just there's it doesn't happen any other way. Tell us about some of the other things Promise Keepers working on before we go. Yeah. So let me break some news, man. On I'm gonna yes. break it here. So we are starting a tour. We're going to do oh, the yeah. tour. We could go to huge arenas and stadiums, and, and those are insanely expensive and, and cumbersome to put on. So we've decided instead to make it easy. We want to get a blanket, as much coverage as possible. We're going to mega churches. All the details will come out in um, May sometime. These are mini events. They're three and a half hours long. They're Friday night only. Guys will show up. They'll get dinner. We're going to have a whole big barbecue thing. Three and a half hours of bang Christian preaching and worship. This is not entertainment. This is not la la. Let's all have fun together. This is like men talking to men like men. And yeah. things guys are going to, well, you, you said that from the stage. Yeah, we did. We're going to get real with each other because we, the world's counting on us to step up and be men that is to defend our families, defend the truth, get rid of our dang male pride and say, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm going to get into a brotherhood of, of men where we together are going to start taking it on because this nonsense of transgenderism and, and, and going after our young kids, our 10 year old girls and saying, you're really a boy. And I'm, let's not tell your parents. Are you kidding me? What are we yeah. doing about that? We got, we got Christian leaders in Canada and England being thrown in jail for standing for Christ, mm -hmm. and it's getting more and more in America, and nobody's standing up against it. Where are our godly men? Get off your dang video games and your porn and your obsession with getting more money and more this and more that. Start calling them back to being godly, 
standing up and we're going to give them the reason why you brought you brought up my book of daring faith in a cowardly world that's what it's about why should i give all for christ because you're going to be judged with what you do with your salvation god has co co airship ruling with christ crowns rewards jesus says in revelation one don't let anybody snatch your rewards away like it's a big deal what we do in this life so we're going to encourage men to say stand up and be counted because the world's counting on you and the lord is going to reward you greatly when you do in this life and the next well, we've never been in a place in society i think and i love that you preached it I, we've never been in a place in society that I think we were at today. And I love that Promise Keepers has a history where it actually moved the needle concerning men in America. And now I believe it's going to move the needle concerning men in the world. And we're so excited that you're the CEO of it and that you're in charge of this because your personality, your heart, your vision, your focus, and also your experience. I love that you're one of the rally points for men of this generation. Thanks, Ken, so much for being here today. And I want to encourage all of you who are watching. Go to Promise Keepers right now and download the app. If you're a mom, make sure to have your sons do it or your husband to do it. If you are a daughter, ask your dad. Do it as an accountability thing with your dad. Would you download the Promise Keepers app? And would you, I mean, let's encourage each other. Let's not just say it's the man's responsibility, but let's gather around men and point them towards relationship right now. And it's your time. So I'm excited for you. Well, we'll hear from you again, Ken. Thanks for being on today. Thanks, man. He's so awesome. I just love that interview. There's an extended version of that interview for over 20 minutes. We'll have it on YouTube up later this week. So I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel still. And also go to the Promise Keepers app because it's such a great app and it's bringing so much connection to people. I know I just said it, but I have to be redundant. Okay, here we go. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. I love our show. It's exciting. And we bring a hopeful perspective. And you may not always agree with everything. I see some of the comments. There's disagreement that happens all the time. But hopefully we're helping to stimulate your discernment, your thoughts, and your perspective. Sometimes when you hear something that you don't agree with, it helps to solidify what God's telling you. Sometimes when you're hearing something that you do agree with, it helps to reinforce it. So either way, my goal is to get you discerning, not to get you agreeing with me on all things, but to bring up things in this day like the issue of religious intolerance that's happening all around the world, or the issue of even martyrdom sometimes, or children at risk, or issues with men, or issues in government, or issues in the church, so that we can look at what God's doing, not just what the enemy's doing wrong, not just what man's doing wrong, but what our God on the throne has planned. And I hope we did that today. So I hope you found it inspirational and encouraging and that it helps your spiritual growth through these discussions. Before we sign off, I wanna remind you one more time to be with us by following us on social media, connecting to us through our, through our other show, Exploring the Marketplace, and we'll see you next time. With Tammy Houghton Spiller, and Tammy is a pastor in Orange County at Influence Church, and she's going to be teaching you about fasting. Now, she's written a book about this. She's practiced this as a lifestyle, and they have seen breakthrough in Orange County and one of the culture capitals of the world like no other church I know. They're influencing influencers right now, but they're doing it from a place of deep spiritual authority that only comes by fasting and prayer. And she's going to teach you how to bring fasting as a very real part of your life for breakthrough and for connection to God. And if you've never taken a class or an event or anything on fasting before, this is your event. This is the time to engage it because you need breakthrough in 2023. And it only comes by setting yourself apart. And fasting is one of the keys. Don't be afraid of fasting. She's like a mother in the spirit. She's going to feel so nurturing to you as she talks about it. It won't be a scary subject. And if you've already been fasting, this is going to help you to go deeper and understand more and even take on some of the faith that she has to do it in your life right now. Uh -huh.